Christy Gardner is a bi speculative fiction writer. She is the author of the Broken Stars sci fi trilogy and the award winning cookbook, Cooking with Cocktails. Furnished with degrees in gender studies and sociology, she crafts queer characters that adventure through space, time, and emotional maelstroms, questioning what identity and home really mean. Christy. Thank you, Elaine. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm going to be reading an excerpt from book two in the Broken Stars series uh, called The Darkest Stars. If I can find the page. <laughs> A rush of curiosity fueled Kalei's legs, propelling her forward. She bypassed the shiny box with the food and made straight for the corridor. She moved quickly. If she was caught now, she didn't know what they'd do to her. Sure, they'd given her a sparkly new uniform, but she w wasn't really one of them. Not yet. She still had very little clearance. She hadn't even met the hybrids who'd supposedly just arrived. She was among the others, but was still other to them. The lights flickered above, Kalei's breath caught in her throat. Something echoed back the way from which she'd come. She kept moving, glanced behind her, bracing herself for what might jump through the shadows that disappeared and reappeared with every flicker of light. But she was alone. She reached the door. It was as she remembered it, and like the rest of the ship, this one had no white panels. It was rectangular, a large black window at the center. She peered through the glass and couldn't see a thing. For all she knew, there was nothing beyond this gateway but oblivion. Or things that go bump in the night, she thought. She shivered. Her heart thumped against her chest. She wrapped her hand around the cold metal handle. That was another thing that none of the other doors seemed to have. They operated with motion sensors, movement. This one was secured with a good old fashioned steel bolt, as if the others wanted to keep people out or lock them in. Kalei shook off the creeping anxiety oozing down her back. This could be her last chance to find out what exactly was down there. She squeezed the handle and slipped through, the door latched firmly behind her. The blackness was impenetrable, complete, the most terrifying thing Kalei could have imagined. While she knew it was going to be dark, she'd expected some of the light would have fought its way through the window. It didn't. With breath short in her lungs, she shuffled forward, her hands tracing the wall for a light switch. The toe of her boot caught on the lip of what she was sure was a sharp metal grate. She stumbled on it. The metallic sound echoed through the dark space. One, two, three flailing steps and a long metal bar caught her by the hips. She desperately grasped at it, a railing. Where there was a railing, there were stairs. Her arms extended along the bar. She took baby steps, hoping she wouldn't pitch forward to her death. She was right. The railing was long, cold and straight until it curved sharply downward. She lowered a foot to find a narrow foothold. The other one followed. Taking each stair one at a time, she climbed down further into the darkness. One minute passed. Another. It seemed the staircase would never end. The blackness too. It was as if what she was feeling inside had finally bubbled up and out of her, swallowing her whole. After a lifetime, the grates beneath her feet ended, giving way to a smoother, more slippery surface. Clay imagined in her mind's eye she was likely standing in a room not unlike the loading bay. If that was true, she'd reached the bottom. Still, she clung to the railing, her breath shallow and ragged. It was the only sound and it was deafening. She thought about calling out just to cut through the silence, but the risk of getting caught somewhere she didn't belong sent a chill down her spine, which was already coated in cold sweat. Besides, it was highly unlikely anyone would hear her down here in the dark, alone. There was nobody down there with her, was there? 
She hugged herself, clenched her eyes shut, tried to slow her thoughts. She swallowed the lump forming in her throat. Of course she was alone. But then, as much as she tried, she couldn't stop the question from circling in the corners of her mind. What was down here? She pried her cramped fingers off the railing. She tried to recall the layout of the loading bay. It had been a ridiculously large room, brimming with pods. Through the glass dome, she'd seen stars. When Calais looked up here, none of their twinkling light made it down to her. It was just more darkness. She didn't know how that was possible, but then again, nothing from the last week seemed real. Yet it existed. Calais focused on that fact, that and physics. The room must have four walls, for God's sake. There has to be a switch somewhere, she thought. With the railing as her starting point and her arms stretched ahead, Calais made her way to what she guessed was the closest wall. She bumped into it about a few thousand moments later. It was rigid, formed by several curved columns like the inside of the pods. That's new, she thought. The loading bay's walls had been smooth like the floor. So why was this one different? She traced the surface, inching forward, desperate for something, anything that would shed some light on her current situation. She found what felt like a button, small, flat, recessed against the wall. This had to be it. Her mind spun as she realized it could be a button for anything. It could open a wall like a garage door. She still wasn't sure she could survive in the alien atmosphere. That would be bad, really bad. It could be an alarm. And if it was, it might alert the others to her location and she could get in serious trouble as if she wasn't already in serious trouble. Or hell, for all she knew, the button could be a self-destruct switch and she'd incinerate herself and anything else that was in that room. She took a deep breath, exhaled. She pushed the button. A loud buzz filled the air, a mechanical whir. Then there was light. Kalei covered her eyes, winced. It was bright, brighter than bright. It made her yearn for the darkness she'd wanted so desperately to escape. She covered her face with her hands, peeked through the pink gaps in her fingers. And then Kalei stumbled back against the wall and shrieked. Like I said, that's his book two in the Broken Stars series. The Stars in Their Eyes is book one, and book three, The Epic Conclusion, uh, releases on October 1st, and it's called The Stars Inside Us. Thank you.